everybody and welcome to Observing with Webb for February of 2017. Uh, this is where the armchair astronomer figures out what they're looking at, why it's so cool, and what they should check out next. Don't forget to check out my Podbean page for the podcast. That's mrweb.podbean.com, my YouTube channel, which you're on, uh, and also my Twitter feed, at MrWebPV, all one word, no punctuations. Uh, so February is, well, it's going to be cold, one of the coldest months, um, but we've got Venus, it's dominating the evening sky, we've got Mars right nearby, so you're looking at the same spot, uh, Jupiter's going to be out longer, you uh, might even catch Saturn in the morning, and we have a penumbral lunar eclipse, which I'll explain why it's kind of exciting um, a little bit later. So let me go through the, uh, the planets first that you can see, then the events, and then we'll talk about um, some constellations, okay? So right up here, I already have it set up for February 1st, and uh, if you didn't notice yesterday, uh, yesterday still January, Mars, Venus, and the Moon made a nice triangle in the sky. It's really neat to see. But now that it's one day later in February, they're making a nice line in the sky because the Moon's moved through a little bit. So Mars and Venus are the sunset planets. Okay, Sunsets are about 5.30 in the beginning of the month. And uh, let's just go to where it's a little bit darker. And what you'll see is Mars and Venus over here. Now, how are you going to find these? Well, Let's start with Venus. It's bright and easier to find. So watch the sunset or wait for it. And uh, Venus is going to be that bright dot about 35 degrees above the horizon. That's three fist widths held at arm's length from the horizon. It's, it's going to be the first thing that you're going to see. Uh, but it will set before 9 p.m. It won't be out there all night. Uh, if you have a pair of binoculars or a telescope, uh, you can actually zoom in on there you'll be able to see uh, it's in a half phase, um, almost a crescent phase, in fact. And then throughout the month, you'll notice that it gets bigger and bigger throughout the month, uh, at least if you use the same eyepiece and telescope, and it gets into this sort of uh, crescent shape by the end of the month. That's because it's coming, uh, if Earth is going around the sun, which it is, Venus is doing that as well, but much quicker, and it's coming around the inside track between um, Earth and the Sun right now, so it's getting closer and it's getting bigger. All right, let me zoom back out, and do, 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 there we go. Uh, let's go back to February 1st, okay? There we go. So Venus, Mars, and the Moon. So that's pretty cool about Venus. Mars is going to be right nearby here. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, just find Venus and Mars will be that ruddy red object up and to the left of Venus. And then in the beginning of the month, they'll be about five degrees apart. And then at the end of the month, they will be whoop, much further apart, as you can see here, about 10 degrees apart. So let's go back to February 1st again. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so that's what that's the planets that you'll see around sunset. Yeah, Neptune and Uranus are there, but you need your telescope for that. Uh, so let's start looking around toward the other side where the stars are starting to rise and come on up. And um, let's see, you don't see anything yet. We're waiting. It's 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Le oh, there we go. Jupiter, which if you've been noticing Jupiter, you've got the very bright star Arcturus right below it. Uh, so you can see that in the mornings. But anyway, uh, if you're looking for Jupiter, uh, and if you're looking for it before you go to bed, you got to get out um, before, or sorry, after 11:30, at the beginning of the month, and then actually uh, uh, you could see it a little bit earlier in the night toward the end. About 9:30 at the end of February is when Jupiter is going to rise. So all you have to do is just look for the very bright object low in the east if you're staying up late. So if you're actually getting up early in the morning, like let's say before, I don't know, 6 a.m., what you got to do is actually look more toward the south. And you'll see Jupiter up here um, at negative 2 magnitude and Arcturus at 0 0.96. Jupiter is going to be brighter and above Arcturus. But they make a pretty cool pair in the morning sky over here in the south. I've seen it a bunch lately. Now the other uh, planet that you'll be able to see is Saturn. So you gotta look southeast in the morning 
okay? But you got to get up early in the morning because it's um, it rises at maybe 4.30 in the morning. Uh, and so I would say kind of wait till 6 a.m. and it might be 10 or 20 degrees above the horizon. Uh, but it's not a great time to find Saturn. But if you see something bright, that might be it. Um, now, you notice that I didn't talk about Mercury, and that's because, well, it's lost in the glare of the sun for the month, uh, at least for the beginner. Right. So uh, those are the planets. If we go backwards and review, we've got Saturn very early in the morning. Jupiter is going to be out kind of uh, throughout the night. And then our sunset planets will be Mars and Venus right here, okay? All right, so let's move on to the events for the month, okay? So we've got uh, on the 1st, which I just kind of talked about a little bit, is we've got a nice uh, close encounter between Venus, Mars, and the Moon. All you got to do is look uh, yeah, pretty much southwest uh, between 5.30 and 8.30 p.m., and uh, you get Venus, Mars, and the Moon making a nice line and they're all within about 15 degrees of each other um, and if I can let's see Dave you're gonna like this put on a nice 10 and 20 degree field of view on my screen you can see that they're all kind of within about 15 degrees of each other definitely within 20 okay. uh, but anyway uh, let's see, and then the first quarter moon will be on the 4th. So what happens is the moon's over there, and each day it gets higher and higher and brighter and brighter and thicker and thicker. And it's up here. The right half is visible. You can see it until midnight. And then uh, what you'll notice is over the next couple of nights, not much happens, and the moon gets bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker uh, until the night of the 10th. Now, what happens on the night of the 10th? This is the sort of kind of news, uh, penumbral eclipse. Now, normally, I don't say anything about a penumbral eclipse because the moon just sort of goes into the Earth's shadow. Um, but uh, let me back up. There's a dark inner portion of the Earth's shadow. That's when you get the total eclipses. But no shadow is perfectly crisp and clear. It's actually a little bit fuzzy. And so there's this outer circle which is called the penumbra and if the moon gets in here it doesn't get shaded all that much but if it gets into the umbra the dark part on the inside then that's when you see a partial eclipse of the moon so the penumbral eclipse usually isn't eventful you can't even really see it so I usually ignore them however this time the I really should have actually gotten a picture for this uh, maybe this will work if you've got the umbra and the penumbra the moon is actually going to go in and get very 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 close to the umbra which means this part here is actually going to be pretty dark so the top of the moon that's getting close is actually going to be very dark and so it's going to look weird and i bet you uh if anybody looks at the moon that night they're going to be um I don't know, a little confused, which is fine. Uh, but if you know exactly what's going on, you're good to go. So, uh, so anyway, let, let's just uh, take a look at this. So here's the idea. Um, you probably won't notice anything until 7 to 8.30 p.m. So luckily the moon is up at that point. Okay, in fact, let me, uh, well, yeah, let me uh, center on the moon. Okay. So the moon should be coming up at that point. And let's zoom in closer first. You'll notice that it does get a little darker as I fast forward through about 10 o'clock. Let me back up again. Okay, so now it's still daytime. And you see, you might be able to see this sort of line here. It depends on your monitor. But you see it move across. That's the penumbra. You can barely tell it's there. And then at about peak... Uh, shade, which is probably right about 8 o'clock, you see it's a little darker, but this top portion of the moon is not really visible. So this is going to be not visible, but it's not a sharp line like in a total lunar eclipse. So if you look up at the sky, it's going to be different. The moon's going to look different than it usually does. In fact, I think I have maximum shading at like 744. So if you compare 730 to 830, not a huge difference, but then 9.30, you do see the difference. 
So 9.30, not in the shadow. 7.30, it's in the shadow. So there is a difference. It's going to look a little weird, but it's not aliens. It's not crazy things going on. So be careful of those conspiracy theorists. In fact, it's kind of entertaining to see what people come up with for this. But uh, just to kind of give you a more uh, Earth-based perspective, if we start... Um, at about here at 6.30 p.m., uh, the moon's going to rise. It's going to be dark by about 7, and then it'll get a little bit darker, a little bit darker, okay? About 7.44, it'll be as dark as it, usually, as it can be. And then, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, and then by about 9 o'clock, it'll be done. But you'll be able to see it and observe it, which will be pretty cool. And you'll be the one who knows actually what's going on. All right, uh, let me move forward a little bit. Uh, and you notice that, again, Jupiter and Arcturus are over here, so that, and the moon's sort of on its way. So the moon will stop by on the 14th, and on the night of the 14th and the night of the 15th. And so what you see is the moon and Jupiter make this uh, kind of arc in the sky, if you will. Uh, and then on the next night, the 15th, going into the morning of the 16th, they make more of a triangle. You've got Jupiter, Arcturus, and the moon making a nice triangle. Okay. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. The, uh, oh, we're going through the moon phases. So two more days, and the moon is a last quarter moon, visible from midnight into the morning. The left half is lit up. Uh, and if you recall, Saturn's down there in the morning, and the moon's getting a little bit closer. When will the moon actually hit? Well, not hit. Pass by. Well, on the 20th, if you look at the morning of the 20th, 4.30 a.m., uh, the moon is going to be above Saturn. So that would be a good time to catch Saturn. Or the next morning, it's a very thin crescent moon, and the moon will be to the left of Saturn at that point, uh, only about 7 degrees away. Both cases, the day, the day before... Seven degrees above Saturn, the day after, oops, it's about seven degrees to the left of Saturn. Okay, so give it a shot, see if you can see it. Uh, and then we, uh, we move on. You know that's a crescent moon right there, but then it gets thinner and, and dimmer, and it gets closer to the sun until the 26th when we have the, f uh, sorry, the new moon. Uh, just a side note, you might hear something about a, uh, a solar eclipse. Um, that's only happening if you are in parts of South America and Africa. Now, you might be hearing about one happening in August. That is definitely happening in the good old United States. But um, this one in February is just in South America and Africa. Okay? Uh, and lastly, let's go to the very last day. Go to sunset. Look west. Get a nice... Uh, close encounter between the Moon, Venus, and Mars. It's a, it's a bigger triangle, or but it, but it's a triangle. In fact, let me put my field of view on. They're all within 20 degrees of each other, which is pretty neat to see. Okay, that's two fist widths held at arm's length, uh, and that um, that is it for the events of the month. So I'd say get out there for that penumbral lunar eclipse. Uh, that's probably the highlight of the month. Uh, so let's take uh, let's take a quick little bit and uh, just talk about general constellations. Um, you know what? Let's I'm I'm gonna fly by the seat of my pants here. Uh, I'm gonna say let's just talk real quick about some of the northern constellations. I'm just making this up as I go a little bit because uh, Orion, you can see some of my past videos like January's to, to look at Orion and how to see some of the winter constellations. But uh, I want to take a second and talk about some of these northern ones. They're called North Circumpolar Constellations. And why are they called North Circumpolar Constellations? Well, because they circumnavigate the North Celestial Pole. If I fast forward time, you see that they just keep going around and around and around and around. And they're going around Polaris here, the pole star. But let's talk about actually observing these. The Big Dipper is this, what we call an asterism in the sky. It's an asterism, not a constellation, because this is the seven brightest stars and because they, the Big Dipper name is a recognizable shape. The actual constellation 
is Ursa Major, which includes not just the tail, uh, it includes the tail, the body, the head, the legs of the great bear or big bear, Ursa Major. Um, but for us beginners, let's just take a look at the Big Dipper here. A um, couple things that you can see. The thing you might know is that if you go to the end of the cup here, you can actually connect these two and make an arrow. Let's see. Uh, let me demonstrate that. You can actually make basically an arrow that points right to Polaris, which is a good way to find the North Star. Find North if you're lost or something like that. Um, and the other thing here is down here in the handle, there's these two stars called Mizar and Alcor. Okay, it's a double star, and the cool thing is, is that if you uh, you should be able to resolve it with just your naked eye. This actually used to be back in the old days where people rode horses and did bows and arrows, and I don't know. Um, I should have more on you for more on that for you. Uh, but that would actually be a vision test. If you could see those two stars, you're good to go. If not, well, you can't be an archer. Okay. Uh, but you can see those with your naked eye. You can see them even better with a telescope. Um, but yeah, this is probably the most recognizable uh, asterism in the night sky. Uh, the Big Dipper points to the Little Dipper, which is Ursa Minor. Um, and you can tell how light polluted your skies are with Ursa Minor. Because these two bright stars at the end are bright. So is Polaris. Not the brightest, but it's fairly bright. But these four in the middle are fairly dim. If you have good skies, you can see them. If you have light polluted skies, you will not be able to see these four. And you're going to have a hard time finding a little dipper. Okay? Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I hope you have a wonderful February and get out for that eclipse, take some pictures, and um, I wish you very clear dark skies for the month of February.